so I don't know if you've seen uh, what the Capital Research Center has put out, but they have they have a very narrow uh, definition of extremist. Extremist groups are only uh, designated extremist groups if they have documented ties or publicly expressed support for terrorism or terrorist groups, ties to or publicly expressed solidarity with hostile foreign governments, and or support for anarchism, uh, Marxism, or communism. Okay? That's the deal. So how many of those groups are in Chicago right now? At least 279 extremist groups are now on the streets as part of this coalition to march on the DNC in Chicago. Separate coalition that is publicly planning disruptions at the convention, several Chicago-based Islamic groups that are also involved in the efforts but are not officially enlisted in any coalition. Of the 229 groups involved in the anti-DNC efforts, 162, or 71%, qualify as an extremist group. At least 147 of the anti-DNC groups have expressed support. 147 of these groups have expressed support for or have ties to terrorist groups or terrorist attacks. But a handful of those 147 groups have ties to or publicly support Hamas and, uh, and or the terrorist attacks on Israel uh, on October 7th. Hamas allied and Iran-backed Marxist-Leninist terror groups also on the ground, the Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine. They have strong direct links to a coalition that is openly planning to replicate the violent 1968 Democratic Convention. Um, The majority of the identified extremist groups are linked to or have expressed solidarity with at least one of the nine foreign governments hostile to the United States, including Iran, China, Venezuela, Russia, North Korea, Syria, Cuba, Pakistan, and Nicaragua. The extremist groups also have ties to or express support for 19 foreign terrorist organizations, including Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the PFLP, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, the Islamic Resistance in Iraq, the Lion's Den, the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine, the Muslim Brotherhood, Jamaat Islami, uh, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, Marxist terrorists from Puerto Rico, Islamist terrorists in Sudan, lashkar e Taiba, uh, His Hizbul Mahajin, Duktarhen e Malat, and the Communist Party of the Philippines, the New People's Party. The coalition to march on the DC uh, DNC's official statement and website content explicitly supports Hamas and the atrocities committed on October seventh. A group's official involvement in the coalition is a very strong indication that they are a supporter of terror. Terrorism. A large portion of the extremist groups have engaged in, endorsed, or attempted to assist acts of violence, property destruction, economic sabotage on the U.S. soil, and have justifiably described as acts of terrorism. The monitoring of the mainstream media coverage of the protests found almost a universal failure to inform readers or watchers about the pro-terrorism stances of the groups and the activists mentioned and quoted in the news articles and on-air segments. That's quite a list. That seems, uh, I don't know, maybe dangerous and something people should point out. What do you think, Stu? <laughs> you, think that's, you think that's worth pointing out? I mean, I, I don't want to get extreme here. You sound like a... Uh, some sort of a nut job protester there with, the, with that yeah, sort of request. Uh, yeah. But look at the look at the groups. These are all the enemies, the worst of the worst, and they are sixty percent of them. They say are from foreign countries. Sixty percent of these people coming in to, on the streets of Chicago are from foreign countries. This is foreign interference from our greatest enemies. And the Democrats are playing footsie with them. Yeah. 
I mean, this they should is, be denouncing them from the state. Yes, that should be not not handing them their the their chosen vice presidential pick. That's certainly not no. the direction to go. I mean, if you think no. about it that way, the reason why Tim Walls is the vice presidential candidate is to appease these groups. They specifically yes. picked him because they were worried about these protests and worried the stuff would yes. flare up. Yes. So they gave them exactly what they wanted. And what happens, Glenn, when you give terrorists and terrorist supporters exactly uh, what they want? They demand more and get stronger and louder mm-hmm. and more dangerous. And you incentivize and closer them. to you. Right? You incentivize yeah, them absolutely. to do more of this. And so yeah. this is what they have to deal with. I mean, they have made this bed and they now have to lie in it. So let me just, now that you know who these protesters are, and you know the reaction of the uh, Harris uh, campaign to embrace and get closer, do you think she's qualified to be commander-in-chief? Do you think sitting down at a negotiating table with Iran, South Korea, China, Putin, that she'd be able to actually bring peace to the world? This is the most dangerous time in our country's history. This is more dangerous than the Civil War because we have nuclear weapons pointed at us. We not only have the chance of civil war in this country, we are looking at global annihilation as well if we're not careful. My gosh. I I just... You know, nobody is, nobody is pointing anything out in the media, the mainstream media. It was all bunny rabbits and, and Easter flowers from the networks yesterday, and they intentionally hid Joe Biden. They intentionally, I mean, you don't go 90 minutes late for the president of the United States. They pushed him out of prime time on the East Coast, and that was intentional. They're hiding him. Nobody wants to see him anymore. He's now on vacation in California. And uh, I, I hope his health stays really, really strong. But again, I ask, who's running our country?